Hello and welcome and welcome to Aiden Eyewitness. All around the central area of Manchester, new construction is in progress. When will it ever end? When will Manchester be finished? The answer is never. Manchester will always be in a state of flux. In this video, we take a look at what I call the city central southeast area. That's Ardwick, Ancoats, Mayfield, the A6, the eastern end of the Mancunian Way, and Piccadilly Station. Take a good look at it now, because very soon a massive new construction project will begin. The name? Two letters and a number. Late February 2023, Ardwick Green, next to the A6, just to the southeast of Manchester city centre. The crocuses are out, and it looks like the daffodils are coming out in sympathy. Sorry for the joke about strikes in 70s Britain, it's just that, well, maybe things are heading that way again today. Anyway, let's focus on construction. This building on the corner of Stockport Road, opposite the Apollo Cinema, now music venue, is still not completed. I featured it previously. We've seen delayed construction projects in Liverpool, but it seems there are a few here in Manchester as well. Not much change on Ardwick Green. St Thomas's Church has long since become a conference and office centre. The church in pub disappeared quite a few years ago. The site remains empty, but just about one minute away by bike on the other side of the Mancunian Way. Things are happening. What's that big project on the right? We'll find out shortly. But first, let's focus on that tall white building. It's one of my favourite buildings in Manchester. I admired it from the 192 bus as a child when there was just a roundabout here. This flyover was built in 1994. In 2004, I took photographs of one of the Big M billboard sites. They were intended to promote Manchester. Those photos were used in this new book called Manchester Unspun by Andy Spinoza. He founded City Life magazine and ran PR companies and was closely involved in the development of Manchester over decades. I'm proud to say that he used two of my photos in his book. It's very readable and quite critical in places, so prepare to be surprised. Back to that building. It's been empty for many years. It was once part of UMIST, the University of Manchester Institute of Science and Technology. Then, in 2004, it merged with Manchester University. Today, there's no insignia on the facade as the university moved out and sold the building. It's the Maths and Social Science Building, designed in the Brutalist style by architects Cruikshank and Seward. Completed 1969, 15 stories, 50 metres tall. Today, the building is empty, but I would love it if it was converted into apartments, and I'd like to live up there at the top, looking southeast over Ardwick towards Stockport, an area I know very well. For me, this building was a symbol of progress, scientific excitement, and a bright future for Manchester. Pity it's ended up this way, but hopefully it will soon be given a new lease of life. More info on the Wikipedia page, which uses my photo uncredited, but at least they've used it. Another brutally structure nearby is this wall built around 1968. It was designed by Tony Holloway and is Grade 2 listed. It marks the eastern edge of the Umist site. Just opposite is what was the BT building. Then it became the McDonald Manchester Hotel, but the hotel chain had to sell it after a downturn due to the pandemic. And now we approach a very interesting development area next to the Mancunian Way. It's Mayfield, named after the former Overspill Station, opened in 1910. Now an innovative venue for events, including the Warehouse Project, which is a nightclub event. And here we can find one of Manchester's most remarkable regeneration projects, Mayfield Park, the first new park in central Manchester since Hume Park appeared in the late 1990s. Since the 19th century, Manchester has had a long tradition of municipal parks in its suburbs. Here here we see a state-of-the-art 21st century park. It's been modelled and landscaped around the River Medlock, once polluted and hidden behind factories or culverted under the ground. Footpaths, riverside banks, bridges, benches, open spaces have been laid out in a contemporary style, incorporating some industrial relics including these rusty metal beams. The Medlock meanders its way westwards through the park. There's a fantastic children's play area and it's overlooked by the arches of Mayfield Station Viaduct. Could they be reused? Maybe. The river is home to those migrants we see everywhere in Manchester, Canada geese. What we see now is only the beginning. The whole area is set to become a residential district. I really like these hand-drawn sketches, though I can't quite match them up to what's there today. All I can say is, watch this space as it continues its slow transformation from post-industrial waste ground into a new central city district, effectively expanding the heart of Manchester ever further outwards. A few steps away is Temperance Street, 
and we've gone back into the as yet undeveloped city. The name is a reminder of the anti-alcohol movement of the 19th century. The gloomy brick viaducts look very photogenic and down there is the Medlock, as yet unbeautified. YouTuber Martin Zero loves wading through murky waterways and tunnels and he's done a series on the River Medlock. Definitely worth watching. So let's proceed now to another reminder of the Manchester that once was. It's St Andrew's Square, named after St Andrew's Church, consecrated in 1831 and once surrounded by terraced housing. What was once a handsome and well-appointed place of Anglican worship is now Travis Street Car Park. It is overlooked by one of the biggest construction projects in this area. It stands next to the Leonardo Hotel, which I featured previously. This area is Piccadilly East, a project by Capital and Centric. They're also doing Weir Mill in Stockport with that tower next to the viaduct. Here, they are creating a new urban environment with a mixture of renovated mills and new structures. The sign says, Victoria House in the area of Piccadilly Central, Manchester, is a vibrant new development of 177 apartments designed by Simpson Hoare. How many projects are they doing in Manchester at the moment? Located in Manchester's newest neighbourhood in the HS2 regeneration zone, the signs continue. Where only good stuff happens. Hmm, that's a contrast with times past in this area. It's going to be your new fave place. Well, it could be. I could imagine living here. We'll ride down by the Metrolink tracks towards Manchester Piccadilly Station. Over there is where the trams stop and reverse direction. Here, just next to Sheffield Street, is the beginning of another construction project. The footpath leads right across the site, and we have 360 degree views of it. This site is right next to the planned HS2 station, which will stand right next to Piccadilly Station. We'll head around to the front of Piccadilly Station now, via Jutland Street. Manchester's steepest street, a favourite photographic subject of mine, and next to it is a car park. On this site, the tall Piccadilly Tower was to have appeared, but it was cancelled due to the crash of 2008. The site has been sold to HS2. There's just one more project to feature now, London Road Fire Station, one of the buildings we look at on my Manchester photo walk. The exterior renovation is complete, but work on the interior is taking longer than expected. According to Place Northwest, the delay is due to the complexities of working on a historic building. It will eventually house a hotel and offices. Expected completion, 2024. And so that's it for this update of Aiden Eyewitness. I'll focus on another part of the central area soon. If you'd like to help in my mission to capture the slow transformation of the city, please go to the Ko-Fi page. I look forward to your comments. Please like, subscribe, share, etc. Vielen Dank fürs Zuschauen und auf Wiedersehen in Manchester.